I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, just a quick reminder, this session is going to be recorded and we'll be able to post that on Doorways and our YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you who are not able to join us, uh, welcome. And for those that are, are able to join us, thank you for, for tuning in today. I'm really excited to have uh, Vanderbilt alumni Andrew Schlanger here to talk about crushing the first call, uh, part two to an earlier session we did over the summer uh, about effective email outreach. And so with that, Andrew, I'd love to hear from you and, and feel free to get us started. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, it's great to be back and um, looking forward to, to sharing uh, some of this with you. So real quick, I'll just go over a little bit about who I am, what I've been up to since I graduated in 2010. A quick refresh on what we went over the, the first part of the seminar, which is about effective email communication. And so this is, well, once you've sent the effective email and you've got the response that you wanted, what's next? How do you uh, crush that first call and, and get the outcome that, that you're hoping for? Um, and then we'll go through the content of the seminar and then do a quick uh, workshop at the end uh, focused on the elevator pitch. So the intentions for today um, are to provide tools for your initial networking calls in order to increase confidence and preparedness, transform your listening, and get to the next step around. Uh, any questions before we get started? Cool. No, I, I can't quite see the chat. So Paul, just feel free to jump in and um, let me know if, uh, if anyone has a question. Sounds great. Cool. Good to go. All right. So real quick about me. I graduated in 2010. I majored in communication studies and I, I did a dual major of Chinese and corporate strategy. I currently live in Brooklyn. And just a fun fact about me, I'm a competitive Olympic weightlifter. Um, not in the Olympics, just the sport is called Olympic weightlifting. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of stumbled into the communication studies. It was not the first uh, major that I intended on uh, doing at Vanderbilt, but it, it kind of just found me and it has really evolved into my whole career because truly what an executive producer is, I would say is just an executive communicator. And my client is Beats, and we create digital tools, products, and services for all of their, their new products. Um, and when Apple purchased Beats about six years ago, they really invested in a lot of R&D and technology for their products. So it's really exciting that we're able to partner with them and use design as our communication medium. So we've won lots of fun awards, and it's really exciting. Um, so happy to talk to you about this later, but the, the, the reason that I'm here today is that none of this beautiful work would be possible without effective communication. And so that all starts, you know, with that initial outreach. So just a quick look back at the first uh, seminar that we did was what are the, the kind of core tenets of a effective email? Um, so I'm just gonna breeze through these fairly quickly. Um, interrupt if you have any questions or just want me to go a little bit deeper on any of these points. Uh, so the first is context. You want to make sure you get into the world of the receiver and write the email that you'd want to receive. I think that's kind of the golden rule of treat others how you want to be treated. But I think in email conversation, it's like really write that email that you would want to get. You'd want to be on the, the receiving end of. The next piece is um, establish relatedness. So you want to identify something between you and the receiver. The more relatedness you have, the higher chance uh, that you'll get a reply. Um, so a, a great way could be just sharing your major. And if they happen to have that same major or went to the same school as you, you, you now have a shared um, background of relatedness or a place to start your, your uh, relationship. Clarity. You don't want to kind of tiptoe around what you need. Just be clear and straight with your requests and your calls to action. No need for long paragraphs or beating around the bush or um, any, any, of that, any of that stuff. Be human. You want to show your personality and self-express as long as you're professional. Uh, be, be really choosy with your words. Avoid verbal filler, redundancy, and words like but and just and maybe, unfortunately. And lastly, and probably the most important one is uh, drop the anchor really firm up the next step and be persistent, yet patient. And if they don't respond, don't take it personally. Cool. Um, any questions on this point? So if you followed all these rules, you should have a call set up 
that you should be able to crush. So before you get started with the call, you want to prepare for the worst. And I say this because we sometimes get in our head and um, by getting in our head about the call, we, we psych ourselves out. So before even doing the call, you want to get comfortable with the worst case scenario. The person that you're speaking to might forget that you have a call. They may reschedule it or be 30 minutes late, or you may feel like everything was great and then they, they never reply to your follow-up. And well, that's certainly a bummer, but it also just might so happen that that one call is a springboard for the rest of your career. Um, and whatever the outcome, come to terms with the worst case scenario. Once you accept that, it's no longer as scary and you'll be more relaxed, natural and confident in your communication with them. So this is like the context, right? This is how you would want to approach that first call. Um, cool. So once you've prepared for the worst and whatever the worst is for you, so maybe they blow you off or um, may, maybe they you know, uh, say that they can't help you or whatever it is, um, you just wanna get okay with that and just know that it's just practice for the next call. So part one, do your research. So I know Paul has probably talked with you guys a lot, a lot about this, but it's really important. Um, and we're really lucky to have a tool like LinkedIn because it's all out in the open. It's all there. Um, so make sure yours is updated too, because if they're doing their research, they're probably gonna look up who you are and, and what you're studying and what you're doing. So uh, you wanna make sure that your LinkedIn is buttoned up, put a picture, um, things like that. Research the company where the person that you're talking to works. Seems fairly simple, but you'd be surprised about a lot of people don't do that or they're researching a lot of companies and forget who they're speaking with and say the wrong company. You want to avoid all that kind of stuff. Be really focused on what you're doing and what this particular call is. Um, and if you want extra credit, you can start to search for folks with similar job titles. Uh, the person that you're, that you're speaking with, so you can start to understand um, their industry and their kind of corporate structure and start to familiarize yourself with the world of that person that you're going to speak with. So you do this with effective email communication, but when you pick up the phone and you call someone, you want to do, you want to take it a step further. A really easy way to do it is read, just read the company's about page. Uh, they typically spend a lot of time coming up with the perfect words to describe their company. So um, it's kind of like the Cliff's, note, Cliff's notes. So, so use that and have that in the back of your mind. Um, take a look at any uh, sort of big news announcements about the company, check their social channels. Um, it's, it's also a nice kind of icebreaker if something big happened in the news for you to be able to um, talk about that. Being in the know won't necessarily get you the job or the next step, but it will give you a leg up and help you ensure confidence going into the next round. So, Something I want to mention about um, doing your research as well, a great resource that you can take advantage of along with LinkedIn, uh, as well as the company website on the Vanderbilt career website, vanderbilt.edu slash career. You'll see on the top bar, there's a drop down menu of uh, explore industries. And from there, you can go in and you can take a look at any industry. It's just a page of a list of different industries. Go in that side, go inside that page uh, and within there, there are tips on industry specific insights as well as a bunch of links uh, regarding industry specific uh, blogs as well as articles. So be sure to take a look at that in doing your research that can help give you a leg up of understanding what's going on. What are some of the conversations they're having um, and, and what questions come from that that you have. Um, so bring those to the table as well. And, and really use your Vanderbilt alumni network. Use that to your advantage because as an alumni, we really wanna help people. And you already have a shared background of relatedness. You already have, have something shared. So um, it's just kinda, of, don't, don't be shy about that. Know your story. So we're, we're gonna do a little activity at the end to kinda of give this a jump start, but you really wanna write down a 30 to 60 second elevator pitch about your past experience and what you're hoping to gain from the connection or the interview. So this can evolve call to call, but the, the, the core piece of it should be pretty intact and you should kind of be able to 
spit it out like clockwork. So I'm making the recommendation to rehearse and practice with like an actual person who can give you feedback. Um, could be friend or colleague, family, whomever. The delivery though should feel really relaxed and natural and not feel like you've been practicing. Um, so I know that's a little bit tricky, but it's only 30 seconds and it's your kind of quick bio. So um, you definitely want to practice it and not feel like you've been practicing it. Be direct, clear, and have a tight message. Don't expect to crush it on the first time. Each call that you set up could be considered as practice for the next. And your elevator pitch can evolve as you continue to do these, or you might notice that you say one thing and then it tends to be a hook that a lot of people come back to, or you notice that the conversation shifts in a, in a really positive direction when you mention a certain thing in your elevator pitch. So just be aware of, of that. Set up the meeting well, thank them for their time initially, and be clear about your agenda. So if you are looking for a job, if you're just looking to get more information about a particular industry or vertical, um, if you're just putting feelers out there, whatever it is, just be clear about that. Uh, so this is, this is kind of a fun or funky one. Don't just talk about school or work. So be authentic with who you are and what you like to do. Mild jokes are okay. You can transition between different topics and mention referrals or hobbies. All are great. Um, make light conversation, but also read the room. So if the person that you're speaking to is really busy or stressed or really focused on something, it's okay for you to be all business and they might really appreciate that. However, by sharing something about yourself or something that you're doing or community service project or a trip that you're planning or something like that, you may find an unknown relatedness that wasn't there before and all of a sudden you become really memorable for them and they really want to help you. So just you know, it's not, it's, this stuff is never a done deal and this definitely takes practice. Um, but it is something that really effective communicators do. Ask pointed questions. Um, so as the requester of the call, it's your job to kind of drive. So think about them kind of in the, in the passenger seat a little bit. Uh, so you should come with a list of questions pointed questions in your back pocket. You may not have time to get to any of them. The conversation may just flow and that's cool. Um, but you should have questions in your back pocket, especially if they ask you any questions, uh, don't, don't say that you don't have any. Um, so lean into what versus why questions. So a lot of people, this, this comes up a lot for me and, and the question, what initially led you to a career in digital production will make for a lot deeper and more valuable and engaging conversation And why did you decide to become an executive producer? Because when I was a senior at Vanderbilt, I had no idea I wanted to be an executive producer. And I wasn't sure what led me, you know, I wasn't sure why I decided to do that, but there was a series of events that led me to where I am and doing, doing what I'm doing now. And then just the last piece, the conversation should feel like a slow dance or like tossing a ball back and forth or like volleying in tennis. It shouldn't feel so forced. You know, when you talk to friends, that's what it kind of feels like. Um, so in, a, in a, a work scenario, it should feel similar. Listen actively. So a lot of times we listen just for the person to stop speaking. Um, and I think that that's fine, but it's just not effective and it's not gonna lead you to crushing the first call. So. What I'm saying here is to listen in such a way that you actually memorize what they're saying. And if prompted, would need to repeat it back to them. So this will ensure that you're actually listening and not just waiting for them to stop talking so you can speak. Um, better to take a quick note than to interrupt them. And this is a really, uh, this is a hard one because as soon as they say something and something amazing pops in your head and you want to jump in and say it and it takes some training to kind of just jot that down and know that you can kind of come back to it at a later date or you can follow up in an email is also effective as well. Flag points that you can either refer to during the call or follow up and listen to make connections and to deepen your understanding. Like there, you're, you're, whatever the purpose of the call is, you really wanna listen and understand 
what their world is, what their day-to-day -day is like, what their challenges are, um, and what are potential opportunities for you. And that's where taking advantage of the virtual world we're in yeah, comes in handy, right? So you have the opportunity to have a computer in front of you, have a notebook in front of you. So write down a key word, write down that relatedness, write down something that was intriguing to you, maybe something that posed a question in your head as a reminder so that uh, when they are finished talking, it's your turn to respond or ask another question, you're able to go back and, and refer to that comment as well. That shows the employer that you were actively listening as well, um, which is huge advantage, a lot of value added in that. Um, so be sure to take advantage of this virtual world we're in. Um, take notes for yourself. 100%, and it's just also really professional too. And they'll be impressed by that. And then the last piece, um, and th this, is a, th this is a very important piece and something that has taken me a lot of years to understand, but um, you really wanna respect their time. So if you, if, if you agree to speak for 30 minutes, then cap the call at 30 minutes. Or if the conversation is very engaging and you wanna keep going, then just request additional time. The one thing that you don't wanna do is just kind of spill over even if the conversation's really engaging because then you're gonna make them late for their next call. Um, and it just, you know, as the requester of the call, it's your job to kind of keep things, keep things tidy and in order. Um, and so that also takes practice. So you wanna set up as many calls as possible so you can kind of learn all these skills and tools. Um, this was a, a really interesting one that I didn't quite notice when I was a, a senior at Vanderbilt making some of these calls, and now I do, now being on the other side of the fence. So begin to understand the value of the hour of the person that you're speaking with. For example, if you're speaking with an MD or, or a VP, the opportunity cost of that 30 minutes that they're doing the call with you could be something like 200 to $300. So I, I'm not sharing that with you so you get um, nervous about requesting the call. Rather the opposite, knowing that that is what their time is worth and they're giving you that time because it's important to make the connections and that's how they continue to build their network as well. Um, so that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind that um, it's not like in school where it's, it's all part of your growth and development. This is kind of, it's more of a, a, a real world work situation where they're actual clients and time and it all costs money. Firm up the next step. If they can offer to make a referral or connect you with another person, great. But also be aware of where they are in their career. So if they just started in a new company or they're only a year or two out of school, they may not be able to stick their neck out for you and put in that referral just yet. But you can continue to build the relationship with them so they understand who you are, what you're trying to do. And then once, maybe after a few conversations, they feel more comfortable putting in that referral for you. Um, but I've noticed a lot of that where people can tend to get frustrated. Why won't they just send my email in or why won't they just do that? Um, and know that that takes something and that's earned. And if they do do it, you can really appreciate it. And if they don't, you know, well, at least you got practice from, from the call. And that goes back to doing your research beforehand, um, understanding their position. So um, that's another reason why it's very important to get prepared for the call you're about to um, go into. Um, so you have an understanding of where it might lead. Is this a conversation that could lead to a referral? Yes or no? You have that already decided in your head before going into the call, um, or at least an idea, so you're not caught off guard or um, shaken up if it doesn't go exactly as planned. 100%. All right, any questions on kind of the content before we get into just a quick, a quick activity? No? All right. So just real quick, in summary, do your research. You want to check LinkedIn, social channels, recent news, be in the know. Once you are in the know about their world, then you need to get in the know about your world and know your story. So 30 to 60 quick elevator pitch. Practice, but don't sound like it's rehearsed. And then don't just talk about school. Be authentic with who you are, but also read the room. Ask really pointed questions, and the conversation should feel like kind of a slow dance where you're tossing the ball back and forth. Listen actively, 
So you should be able to repeat the details of what they're saying ver verbatim. Don't just wait for your turn to speak. And then lastly, complete. Respect everyone's time, create a next step. And the next step could just be, I'll reach out in three weeks. And that's fine. One thing I do wanna add um, briefly is um, something that often happens is if you go into a phone call with an employer and you get off the phone, your mind might get stuck on that one thing that you misspoke on or that one question you wish you asked. One way to get past that is to set goals beforehand. Um, write down a list of things that you want to happen, that you wanna ask, a few things that can go right in the call. So that when you get off the phone, you can take a look at that list and say, okay, was this a successful conversation for me? Yes or no? And that question will obviously progress. The more conversations you have, the more comfortable you'll be going into a call to get all those goals taken care of and that checklist taken care of. Um, and that's a great checkpoint for you as well. How are you doing in these calls? What are you missing? Where are you succeeding at? Um, so set goals before going into the call. And again, going back to doing your research so that your mind doesn't get stuck on, man, that was a bad call, or I wish I asked this. I don't think I stood out. Because 99% of the time, you did well. You stuck, your, you stuck out. You asked great questions. And it's, it's important to remind yourself that. Um, and so writing that down before you get in the, into that call uh, can be very helpful as well. 100%. Yeah, sometimes we think the call went awful and we create this whole thing in our head, but they thought it went great. So, um, great. So real quick, um, while we have some, some extra time, I'd love to do a little exercise with you guys where you just write your elevator pitch. 30 seconds, real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect or final, just enough to practice with and be brief and, and honest, most importantly. Focus on what's essential and be clear about your goal. Um, and so here are just some basic ideas to kind of get, get the wheels going a little bit. So obviously your name should be included in the beginning, um, but what you're studying or major, majoring in or planning to major in, or even what you didn't could also be a nice one. Um, what you're looking for, why are you having this call? Um, what makes you awesome? Do you speak seven languages? Can you pat your head and rub your belly? Like what is it about you that is differentiating that makes you amazing and unique and that will be memorable for them? What's in it for the person that you're, you're talking to? So this is a little bit of a tricky one. This one might take a little bit more time and practice and as you have more of these calls, you might understand what could be in it for them. But um, I wanted to include it here because I think it, it helps make a really compelling elevator pitch. What skills do you have that are really transferable? So you really wanna think about that. You know, if you're a, a chemistry major and there's a level of detail orientedness in labs and things like that, how does that transfer into other things? What have you discovered in life, in school, in this process of, of networking and, and trying to find a job, what, what have you discovered about what, what you're looking for? And then why are you different? It could be the same as what makes you awesome, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Yeah, so I'll start a timer here really quick just to keep track of time, but uh, structure some format to help um, guide you would be present, past, and then future. Um, and so that's something that can help while answering these questions and creating your elevator pitch is present. Who are you? What are you doing now? Um, past. What have you done? What experiences? What skills do you have? What makes you awesome? That's where you would pull most of these questions from. And then future. How does that lead into what you're interested in? Why you're having this call? What questions you have? Yep. So I'm going to stop my share real quick and click in case you guys want to use the, the chat feature. I can help answer any questions or if you want to post your elevator pitches there, we can do it that way. And I will pull it back up in a second.
And so again, some of the ideas, your name, what you're studying, your background, what makes you unique, what you're looking for, what skills do you have, um, any other past jobs that you've done, internships, um, any volunteer work that has been really memorable um, or you've gained something from. And the cool thing is once you have this, you kind of always have it. I just threw those questions in the chat. So if you want to refer back to them, feel free to uh, take a look. Wow, Scott, this is awesome. Scott, wh where'd you grow up? Oh, I'm sorry, I was eating. I'm from New York City. I'm actually, this is a shirt I went to, Stuyvesant. Oh, you went to Stuyvesant. Yeah, it's people hey. don't know it's a Title I school, but <laughs> it is technically one of the poorest schools in America. Well, that is so cool. It, maybe so, but it has some of the most amazing students who are like, you know, I, I, have a, I have a few friends that went there that are all just so amazing and so successful, just dealing with some of the adversity that you had to deal with to really shine there. Um, so yeah, this is great. Um, when mentioning the poorest schools in America, I would focus more on how that has sharpened your tools and your knives and your smarts um, because that's really- How do I do that in 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah, we, we, can, we, can, we can work on that, but, but that's really amazing. So that hook, you know, that hook is what is leading to this conversation, you know? So if we were having a call and I know that I have, I know a lot of people that went to school there and what they're up to now in the world and what they're, they're creating and the companies that they're running and, and what they're doing. This is incredible because there's already a shared background and relatedness and I already know what you're capable of. And I might be more inclined to make a referral of you based on that. Um, so, you know, I would just think a little bit about that, that, um, trying to think on the on the fly here but this is look this is great you know it was it was definitely a challenging place for me to go to high school but it has you know trained me in being able to focus or um you know stay on the path or be driven in what it is that you want to do or your work ethic um being able to filter out distractions and and external pressures that can um you know, tend to get the best of most people. But you are where you are because of who you are. And what exactly. You're connect, connect those dots. Um, I, I completely agree. Uh, Andrew, add those skills. What does this do for you? Um, don't make the employer have to reach to make that assumption of, oh, okay, so that means you must have this or you must think this way. Make that connection. Talk about, give that why of why you brought that part up. But I agree. I think this is really great.
Um, Amazing. Um, and Scott, I can even, you know, if we want to do a separate follow up, but Paul and I are happy to work with you on this, but this is amazing. You have all the, the pieces here. Um, don't wait till the last sentence, though, to say what you want. So, you know, you want to transition to the private sector to keep, you know, the same level of impact, but work at a faster gate and, and gain more technical skills. I wouldn't wait to, to get to that. You're really clear about what you want. And so, um, and you have a really incredible, you know, background of experience here that has led you to that. But this is amazing. I'd say you're 95% there, Scott. I'm like, is the 30 second thing like literal? Like do I, if, or is it okay? I have a feeling you might use a minute and that's okay. I said 30 to 60 cause you know, I, I, 30, most people seems easier, but it's actually a lot harder, right? Um, but a minute is totally fine. And depending on who you're speaking with, you might not need to give them all. You might just need to give them the like TLDR. I went to Stuyvesant High School. I did the DC circuit. I, you know, thrived in adversity and that really inspires me. Yeah, the 30, the 30 seconds to, to minute really is just a guide to say like, hey, you don't have to spill your whole story here. This is just an intro. This is just your elevator pitch. Um, so that's really just to help shorten that story a little bit and think about what we want to include um, and what, what we want to introduce off the bat. Um, from there, you're going to unravel. You're going to talk more about your experiences, and that's where it would be more than a minute, right? That's where it would be um, the 30-minute conversation because it's a give and a take. It's a slow um, yeah. But off the bat, we don't want to play our cards. A hundred percent, because I might be like, okay, tell me more about the DC circuit and what you got and what you, you experienced from that. And then, you know, you can start to dig in a little deeper on some of the, the details. So you don't have to cram it all in, but I think the way that you, you've structured this and the details that you have included open enough doors for a really um, deep conversation. Awesome, Scott. May, how you doing? All right. Awesome. So so you're in the HOD department, is that correct? Or that changed since I've, I'm a dinosaur? It's the same? Uh, like you're in Peabody, correct? Ah, it's a master program for HOD. Okay, got it. Thank, thank you for just, I wanna make sure I, I understand everything. Okay, great. Um, well, this is almost perfect because I totally get it and what the what is the impact that you're really looking to make. That actually is one of my concerns that I struggle to explain. Okay. I know a lot of, when I was a student, a lot of people struggle to explain what HOD is as well. So it's funny that you know, 10, 10, 11 years later, that still isn't any easier, but human organizational development is everything. Like that's how we function in society and how corporations function and how everything works. I didn't realize at the time then about how important it was. And now I do, especially with COVID, how important these tools and these resources are and the, the strain and the tension that has been put on em employers and employees and how important really, really strong resources like this at organizations are because the environment right now has put all that to the test. Yeah, and that's the really cool thing about being part of HOD, right? There is no defined um, way of explaining what your major is. So what does it mean to you? 
Um, why did you pick it, right? So maybe it's not what is HOD, it's why did you pick it, right? Um, and you go into explaining your, your side of things. So um, I think this is a, a, a great elevator pitch, and especially because I think questions will come from, oh, HOD, right? So what is, what is um, leadership and organizational performance, right? And then you get to explain more. That's the question that sprouts the conversation. So um, I'll look at that as an, as an advantage uh, in, in your play. 100%. Yeah, I, I take a human-centered approach, and that has inspired me to continue along this field, and we're still discovering what all that means. But I am really clear about what has motivated me to continue to cultivate these skills and why I'm now seeking a master's in this. And that I'm excited to talk to you about that because I actually see that it's a need that you have, and it's something that I would be able to, to provide. 100%. Really strong part of this as well is at the end, you transition it into the conversation. So I think one of the most difficult parts about the elevator pitch is where do you go from there, right? Um, so reading the room, making it natural, that's how you make it natural. Um, you make the connection between this is who I am and this is why I reached out. This is why we're talking. It gives them an understanding of where you're at and where the conversation might go as well. Um, so that is something that sticks out as a, a really strong part as well. Amazing. Oh, part two. Let's see. Scott, are, are you, why don't you, why don't you try reading it? If you're okay with that. Sure. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Scott. I'm majoring in geology and political science. I'm one of the few students to come to Vandy from the side of one of the four to um, make the world better. Since then, I was focused on expanding opportunity from others, as well as really learn how government I worked for the administration, I worked as a lobbyist and worked in a think tank. It's the biggest lobbyist on the Hill. And I realized that while I was doing a lot of impactful work in the public sector, the pace of work was slower than I liked and less collaborative just by design. So I'm really looking to transition to the private sector to get more technical experience as well as effect change at a faster pace. Scott, the elevator pitch itself, like the actual words, I think are incredible. Like it's, I, I totally get it. Like I get where you come from, I get what you've done, and I get where you wanna go. So that's amazing. Yeah, I think, I think what's really great here is, is that does also lead into the conversation because that gives the employer an idea of where they are okay so this is what you've done this is where you are this is what you want to go into that would prompt me to then say wow it's really great i've never had experience um on the hill or in dc but this is this is me this is a little bit about the fast-paced environments that i've been a part of and as a college student i'm super impressed with what you've already been exposed to like not you know this aside just as a person so you should feel really great about that. The one piece of feedback that I will give you is around the delivery. Take your time. You don't wanna say it so quick so you get it and, and fits in uh, 60 seconds. If it's a two minute elevator pitch, so be it. As long as you're talking slow and with authority and with confidence. And I know, you know you're eating and we're practicing and that's totally fine, but I'm, I'm saying when you do the real thing, you don't want it to sound like you're reading it. You want it to sound like we're talking right now. And that's, that's the kind of challenging thing. But you now have the elevator pitch in the back of your mind. So even if you forget a sentence or two or even three, like it's okay. Later in the conversation, you can bring it back up. Um, but you know, I, what we don't want to happen is that you're on a call and all of a sudden you're reading something and then you forget something and then you know, then it sounds very rehearsed and we don't want that. We want it to sound very natural, very free. Because the truth is, look, you've lived this. This is your life. It's easy to remember. It may not be easy to remember in the exact words that you've used here, which are flawless, but because it's your life and it's your experience, you know what mm -hmm. you've done. This is usually my elevator pitch. Like sometimes I talk about sort of the how I work 
because they ask me like what is geology because that's kind of random and I tell them like you know I did it to travel for free but um when I did the lab work it was not like regular lab work because when you do geology you sit in a van you go to a field site but you're not allowed to actually sleep on the van you're supposed to look at the field and how it changes over time and that was really annoying at first because it takes hours and hours but it really forces you to think about how each step of the process leads into the bigger picture and how that in at least in the field work leads to the, um, the history of that piece of the world but also it really helped me um, in professional life think about how disparate parts of policy work together and um, either help or harm Americans in particular ways. So that's how I explain it if they ask me about geology and that's how they usually do it. But I usually at, like wait for them to ask me about it because they usually, because I am a double major and sometimes they do ask a lot of, I would say like 80% of the time they do ask me what a, what's, what's with the geology. So well, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be bashful about that because the way that you've articulated okay. it and this, this was, it, it's a perfect example for what I was talking about. Like, what have you learned and how does that transfer? Because your big picture view about how all the parts of a system come together, you didn't get that from like the poli sci or the DC surf. You actually got that from sitting in a van doing a geology lab. Mm -hmm. and that's how life shows up sometimes. So don't be afraid to kind of, make a creative story based on your experience you're a double major first off that's really impressive second off like you don't have to kind of shove that to the side because you don't think that that fits it perfectly fits and i also think that's what makes you really unique where would you put that chronologically in the pitch because that's the that's that like more or less verbatim pitch i usually give yep so I am Scott, I'm actually a double major, geology and political science. Mm -hmm. You may think that these have nothing to do with each other and on the surface they don't. However, what I've discovered is that one has actually really helped me understand the other in a way that I didn't think would even be possible. And I'd be like, huh, Scott, what are you talking about? And you'd be like, okay, so when I was in the van doing these experiments and blah, 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 I really understood how a big picture system comes together. And then now we're already deep in the conversation, your elevator pitch, who cares? Because we're connecting on like, you're, you're already double impressed me. You're communicating on such a higher wavelength than probably the other candidates who are only focusing on just their, their um, uh, political background and that e experience. You have other worldviews and other world experience that has helped inform and shaped you in addition to going to the high school that you went and all the other things that you did. So um, does that answer your question? Cool. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's, a really, that's a really great challenge. Um, and I'm really glad that you asked the question because, um, you know, you also may talk to someone who you just might get a feeling that the geology drop is just not appropriate and you may make a game time decision. No, I'm gonna focus on just um, my, my poli sci background. And that's okay too. And you can make that call because not every call is gonna be the exact same formula. Um, but I, I think that's really, really interesting. Like for me, um, I'm a communications major, but I also minored in Chinese. And people are really like curious about that. I lived in China for a year. I, you know, studied it for four years. I really had that, like, inform my experience at Vanderbilt. And I wanted to live somewhere that I knew that I never would be able to live. And experience a culture that was so different from my own. And have that really enrich my worldview. Because I had my whole life to live in New York City. But I, you know, living in Shanghai was something really special. And so a lot of employers and, and contacts found that to be really interesting. Because... If I was interviewing someone that had just spent a year in China, I'd be like, okay, so this person is cool with being outside of their comfort zone. They're up for whatever challenge that might be thrown at them. And they're like totally okay with learning a language that's completely different than any other language that has been taught, you know, before. So 
as an employer, as someone who you're looking to make a networking connection with, all of a sudden, I'm connecting other dots that you might not even know about that could be skills that I'm looking for in a particular type of person that I'm looking to hire. And that all came from just saying, I'm a Chinese minor. You'd be like, well, why'd you do that? And I was like, well, I could say, well, Vanderbilt made me take a language. <laughs> and I didn't want to take Spanish. You know, or I can have it be a really enriching part of my background and my experience. And it truly is. So in practice with uh, being mindful of the employer's time on the informational interview call, um, I'm gonna go ahead and practice that here. I wanna be mindful of our time here. Um, and we have about 10 minutes left uh, for the session. So I wanna transition over to questions. Um, I know we kind of um, started that a little bit, but I wanna open it up for discussion. If you have any questions for, for Andrew, for myself, um, before we go into that though really quick, I just want to um, just plug, feel free to schedule a coaching appointment with me or your signed coaching uh, career coach as well. Um, and Andrew, I know um, you've mentioned you're open to, to talk as well, so I'll let you share your information. But um, yeah, I would love yeah. to talk more as well. Yep, happy to talk. Um, you know, that's why I'm here. I'd love to, to chat with you guys and help you guys. So um, if you wanted to do a trial run call with me, I'm more than happy to do that with you guys. And I can give you feedback as well, in addition to Paul. So, um, cool. Any other kind of questions? I, I'm really impressed with both of your elevator pitches and all the work that you did and kind of putting that together really quick. It's really amazing. Um, and in just an elevator pitch, it's like, we. I really under, you know, I really understand what, you guys are have done and what you're planning to do and that's what's possible with the elevator pitch so that's really awesome and we really appreciate you both being active and participating um for that activity it was really great to get that practice in awesome I do have one question uh, yeah, do we have any advice on how to find out what's in it that the person i'm talking to i feel like there's nothing i can actually offer at the moment a great question um, and it's probably the truth um, but one thing that you are missing is that sometimes people just like to help and be of service and there is something in it for them and helping you kind of steer the ship of where you want to go so don't discredit that it's not so transactional, like we're like ingrained to think that like tit for tat. It's actually very fulfilling for the other person to support. And especially with, you know, both, you know, all, all of you guys, like the, the backgrounds and what you're actually looking to do in this world. And if one conversation can be the stepping stone for you to create that, like there's actually a lot in it for the other person. And you might not see that yet, but you will in a few years. And, and that's the thing is employers have been in your shoes. So they understand what they're getting themselves into with this call. So how you can actually offer um, and bring something to the table is fill that time with questions. Be curious, um, be willing to be vulnerable about um, experiences that you have, right? So um, if they're giving you the time to, to talk, uh, that's, their, that's their invitation to having a good conversation and that good conversation might be the best part of their day. They might've had a really hard week, right? And, and in that week, they had 30 minutes where they spoke with an awesome student and they were able to offer advice and valuable insight. And they know uh, that they did something good. They gave back, like Andrew was saying, and, and that is what you can offer to them uh, for their week. Yep. Um... And I'm just, I'm looking back at some of the conversations that I had as a senior. I really tapped into the VU Connect and the alumni network. Um, look on LinkedIn for alumni that work at the companies that you're looking at and just start reaching out. And I think the, the Vanderbilt thing is a really big icebreaker because if I receive an outreach from a Vanderbilt student, I would always respond. I may not have the time to do a call or actually be able to help, but I'll always respond. 
Now that might not always be the case if someone was just cold outreach to me. And the reason is, is that there's a shared relatedness. That's a great question. Really great question. Um, cool. A any others, Paul? Nothing, nothing in the chat. Um, but you, you all have Andrew's email here. My email is my name and it's also on the Vanderbilt.edu slash career website. Feel free to reach out to me or Andrew as well with any questions. Uh, we're both happy to help with elevator pitches or, or Andrew with practice informational interviews as well. Um, 100%. Sure that he is uh, very intelligent, and very knowledgeable in this area and he's a great person to, to talk to. And so I would, I would, um, extend that invitation as well, as long as he will uh, allow it. And so we really appreciate your time, Andrew. Thank you again for my pleasure. Part Thank one. you guys so much for part two. participating. 100%. All right, guys, have a good one. Have a great rest of your week.